Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Gary. And we're here to talk about our install of the Houghton or Rec Pro 3400 air conditioner. We'll go through the installation of the air conditioner and our thoughts on performance and some tips at the end, so stay tuned. We're with family today, and of course we're going to put them to work uh, by helping us install our new Rec Pro 13.5 air conditioner with the heat pump. Very excited about this. Our current air conditioner is functional, but it is certainly loud, as most of you know if you've got the base units on these air conditioners. Okay, this is on high speed. There you go. Oh. This is on low speed of the air conditioner with Gary sitting in the chair. We're at the point where we would like to actually have conversations with the air conditioner running, so we're going to try this and we'll take you along on the install so you can see if you want to do this yourself. Yes, you old air conditioner, you are coming out. We bought this air conditioner from Rec Pro and got it in about a week, which was super fast. The main package was freight shipped, but we also received two smaller packages with the inside controller and the thick roof kit. First step is to take the screws out. Those are the screws that are the biggest butter to get. Those in those side vents. Remember, I did this all by myself. Oh, no. Another one. And I never complain. I know. Let the man handle it. Oh, no, we got it. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Filter me now, it's fine. Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, we're good at this. <laughs> that would take you days to get it with a screwdriver. Two hours later. <laughs> Next, we turned off the breaker and removed the AC fuse to prevent any shocking discoveries. Onto the roof. So the challenge is trying to get this down the ladder without damaging the solar panels. I'm just worried about the, uh, you're going to get caught on the rings. Upskirt? Yep. You didn't wear a dress, did you? Yeah. Going commando is kind of fun. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> one back up. Yeah, I'm going to have to take the lid Can we put, it, can we put the tip on it on here? That's right. Let me see if I can lift it up there. All right, so here I am up here on the roof. It's a nice sunny day here in North Carolina, a little bit humid. But here we go. Just to kind of give you an overview is I cleaned up the hole, got all the way around really well using some iso alcohol. So here you can see the frame that they gave us. Our hole is just a little bit larger at 14 and a half. So when I put the lap sealant on this piece here, I'd see that not going well and dripping right into my coach so what I'm going to do is put some of this uh, sticky butyl tape down the butyl tape is not per instructions but the way that we're sitting I was a little bit leery of leakage inside so I put a little bit of butyl tape so I'm going to use some lap sealant my tube doesn't look the greatest but um, it's self-leveling and then we put a, a bead on the outside of self-leveling dicor as per the instructions so what I'm doing is just smoothing out this and I'm using iso alcohol on my finger instead of water. Does anybody know water don't work? And that seems to do a pretty good job. 
It also helps clean up your fingers when you're done. There we go. So I'm gonna set you back down because I think we're ready, ready for that heavy unit. I'm totally digging the sunroof here. Yeah. It's beautiful. Sure you are. All right, we can try. Let's give it a try. Of course, it'll happen when we fall. Yeah, we have that. And then what we may want to do, babe, is put the um, put that flank side down because it can handle 100 pounds. So what we're doing is the way it shipped was on the bottom piece. There was on the flat piece. What we're doing is putting it in the top of the box, and we're going to slide it up the ladder. So what we're trying to do is get it in the top so that way it doesn't move and slide out of the box or squirt out of the box while we're trying to pull it up here. So trying to figure out how to get 100 pounds up here is not easy. Is this something that I can do? Yeah, the guy on the internet's made it look easy. Sure. Where are you okay? Let that ladder slide. You want to hold it while I get the ladder out? Thanks for your help. Yeah. Yeah. Now I got it up here. Yeah, you have like one side of the road down already. The air conditioner came with a bunch of hardware, which we'll be installing shortly. That's the lower piece that goes on there. And this is the in-between piece for um, the host camper roofs and others. Okay, after we have the air conditioner lined up, I just very briefly threw in the bolts to make sure we were aligned well. Then we'll get into the wire connections in order to make this thing work. On a hot day, sitting under the nose of this camper is the best place to be. Yeah, shade is our friend. It actually is clean. Almost. All the Don't look at that. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Look Russian. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So, um, the main power supply. The the instruction said something about a power block. They didn't furnish that. All they did was furnish the cord. The host has the electrical wire. And then Houghton has a wire coming down here. So what I did was I just uh, connected those up with a wire nut and taped them so they can't be undone that easily. We do not have a uh, thermostat with this. It's got a remote control. We're gonna just tape these up and tie strap them up in here so that they can't come down and rattle all over the place. And I'll tape the ends because they don't need to be used. Gary made me take this down. It's because he was inadequate in getting that up there. So well, this is it. The <laughs> bonus, the piece that really kind of needs to go there is this piece. And I couldn't get that piece up there because this flange. I'm sure that's optional. This flange Entirely didn't optional. fit there. So with, with the uh, reflectics. But she does have a nice, she did a great job of sealing up all of that with all this duct tape. Could be in. Maybe we don't. No, we need it. That's pretty tight. It's just your holes line. Just up. a it's smidge. It's a smidge too short. A smidge too short. Yeah, they kind of like me. Wait, so how is this supposed to work? Got to put the bonnet on. 
But I got like two bonnets. Maybe take there them are, off. There are, there are, there's, all right. Glenn was the smart one in the group and he realized that the one that we have up there is just a shortened version of the, of this one. So we need to take that down, not add one. Smart man. Smart man. Oh, hello. Whoa, we got disco hey, going, disco man. Blade. What the heck is going on? No, it's got that bulb. In case you get stranded somewhere, you can flash lights. There you go. We're putting this extension on for the room and this piece threaded in but the upper piece that went into the plenum up here um, just kind of snapped in from what I could tell I just kind of worked it it snapped in and it's in there now so it's a little bit weird but you got it but we got it so these just snapped up there on that white ring and now I'm just trying to even up the skirt the heat is on to get this AC on because look, it is 90, almost 95 degrees in here. But it's 44% humidity, so it's so it's yeah, it's okay. It's a dry heat. So basically we plugged in that other piece and then we put in this. This little tabs. Little tabs there. Yeah, and we plugged in the electrical before yeah, pin. Yeah, the electrical is plugged in. Yep. The only thing it doesn't do is hide these screws over here. something out there. Yeah, I don't care. So the installation of the Hotton 3400 was pretty simple. Uh, directions were pretty straightforward, easy to follow, so I would start there. And the main reason we bought this air conditioner was for the sound level reduction. Uh, it is fantastic. We can sit here, watch TV without having to blare the TV. We can talk to each other without yelling. Definitely a huge improvement. We can even videotape like we are right now with the hot and on. We're not hitting your sweating. Yep, that's kicking in right now. As far as performance goes, it has been performing generally well. However, we're definitely putting it through its paces since we're in Florida, high heat, high humidity. <laughs> One of the things we noticed is that it runs 20% less humidity in here. It'll stay consistent 20% less humidity than the outside. Well, it's been about six weeks since we installed the Houghton air conditioner from Rec Pro. And uh, ultimately, we've still been unable to get rid of this humidity issue. Uh, we've been in North Carolina, we've been in Florida, we're now in Illinois, and the humidity levels of, of the camper are, are unreasonable to us. In the day, everything is fine. We can get down to about 55% humidity, which is tolerable. Uh, but overnight, we start in the 65 to 70% and it goes up into 80s almost every day. Although the temperature has been decent and the sound has been great, uh, the humidity really makes it incredibly difficult to, to live in here comfortably. So we ended up purchasing a dehumidifier for the camper. We had a small one. We've had this little dehumidifier since we've been on the road and it's done a, an okay job of pulling out water. You can even see some of the water in there. This is simply way too small. We had to upgrade to a, a larger one. This is the Medea dehumidifier. This seems to be working quite well. We've only had it for one day, so it's still early. So we definitely had to go up in size fairly dramatically in order to make it feel comfortable in here. Temperature, we were able to get the humidity down to about 55%, which has been fabulous. And that was 55% overnight. Uh, I will say that we are pulling out buckets of water. So this is the bottom of the Medea. Um, we're gonna just show how much water this is. 
Again, that's 12 hours worth of water pulled out. I have been unable to figure out how to get a hold of Houghton. I haven't been getting responses from Rec Pro to see whether this is expected for this type of air conditioner. But I wanted you to be aware, if you are considering purchasing this and you live in areas of high humidity, um, you will definitely need to have a mid-size dehumidifier in your camper at all times. Our plan is to stow this in the shower while we're traveling and we are currently trying to figure out exactly where we're going to keep it during the day. The dehumidifier that we got is this Medea 20 pint cube. Okay, this is during its typical working mode and when you want to stow it, you lift this up and there's a button you press there. Just squeeze that in. Rotate this. And this is the stowed mode, so it's about half size when you're roading, which is really helpful. Definitely, it's less than the air conditioning. Um, but it's, you know, it's not quiet, but not horrible. I don't think so. Uh, this unit also has some Bluetooth connectivity information to where you can have it set at a certain level to make it a little bit easier. Ultimately, I really like the compact size and the fact that right now um, we're at 79 degrees in here. It's a little warm, but it's at 50% humidity. Uh, that is fantastic. Last night, we had the first night since we got this of like really good sleep. Uh, the, the humidity level was around 55 to 57 percent, uh, which was, I, I forgot how important humidity is to getting a good night's sleep. We decided to keep the air conditioner because of the noise. Again, I'm having this conversation with you while it's on full speed right now. It's nice to be able to have a, a normal conversation in our camper, but if you're in the, those humid areas, you will need to ad address it with a dehumidifier. If you're interested in this Medea dehumidifier, check the description below for details. And check this out. As I was videoing this, uh, it already went down 6%, 7% now. This sucker is a workhorse. We've been playing around with the air conditioner and we have a few tips for you. The first tip is when you get into your rig and it's super hot, the best thing to cool it off quickly is to set the temperature as low as it can go. 60 degrees, I know it sounds really cold, but that will, will allow the compressor to run for longer periods of time and get that humidity and temperature down quickly. Bump it up a few degrees after it gets down to a reasonable level. So tip two, basically if you're leaving the camper or your coach for an extended period of time, turn your temperature up. We do ours about 78, 80. And then when you come back, that way you have enough uh, room on the thermostat to uh, actually drop the humidity and the temperature fairly quickly. Tip number three is eco mode. Uh, you can enable eco mode on your thermostat remote. The eco mode tends to turn on the compressor less than in your regular standard mode and that would help especially if you're maybe off grid somewhere and still trying to keep your air conditioner on. We haven't been able to try this too much because we're in Florida. There also is a sleep mode and we have been unable to figure out the difference between the eco mode and the sleep mode. If anybody has figured out the difference, let us know. Uh, I'd love to hear it. Uh, comment it below. This is tip four. If your air conditioner seems to be running not as expected, and a little bit erratic, and we've had this issue. We were going for about two weeks and it got to be a little frustrating because it didn't seem like it was working the way we expected it to. The key point would be to change your batteries in your remote. Um, one of the things that does not show up on your remote is a battery level indicator. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't know our batteries are starting to go bad and it was causing the air conditioner to cycle really fast. Um, it would be like turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. It was not working correctly. And so, dumping a whole bunch of uh, humidity in right after it turned off, yeah. the compressor turned so, off. So tip number four, check your batteries. Yep.
And elite tip number five is fan speed of the air conditioner. When you are trying to get it down fast, temperature-wise, down really fast, make sure it's on high speed, the fan is on high speed. When you're close to your temperature, I would recommend putting it on auto. By putting it on auto, it changes the fan speed down to low once the compressor turns off, and that seems to have helped a lot in that dumping of the humid air that we were talking about before. And if you're thinking of purchasing one of these air conditioners, make sure to use this 5% off coupon in the description below. Every little penny helps. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll catch you next time. See you on the road. Bye.